Welcome to Bods Mayhem Out. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. This is Blind of the Better Circle, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bod Father. As always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a privilege to have the members of Summoner Circle on the show with us today. And we're going to introduce the band here in just a few moments. This is a six-piece theatrical metal band, Summoner Circle. They've released their full-length album entitled Become None. Via Payment Entertainment, this is the follow-up to the band's 2015 EP, First Summoning. So, guys, I'll let you introduce yourselves, then we'll jump right into the uh, interview. All right, well, I'll go ahead and start off. I am Gog, and I am on lead guitar. I'm on Hex on keyboards. Absalom on rhythm guitar. Blind, lead vocals. Etoc on bass. So, yeah, we're uh, happy to be here, man. Thanks for having us on. Not a problem. Not a problem whatsoever. I always like to mix and match all these crazy bands that are out there right now. And I, I, I do like, I like the theatrical side of some of the bands that are out there right now. And I think that's kind of a lost thing in a way, if, if you ask me. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we noticed that as well when, when we decided we were going to start this up. You know, it was, it was a new project, I guess, what, right around the end of 2014, and we just decided that we were going to try to do something a little bit different. Uh, you know, the area that we're from here in East Tennessee, there were no other bands doing anything like this. And we just felt uh, there's a really good opportunity here. And we're all a bunch of nerds. You know, we all, uh, <laughs> some of us played dragons and video games and stuff like that. And uh, we just kind of let our imaginations go and, you know, came up with the concept and, and let it rip. Especially coming around from the Tennessee, you know, southern part of the U.S. And especially metal. I don't know a lot of bands that actually do theatrical stuff. Uh, and I may be lazy and, you know, just have researched it a lot. But I just don't know of any other local bands under the radar, you know, independent bands that actually do theatrical stuff other than horror punk bands that I cover, you know? I mean, there there's a few of them, but you're right. They are... They are hard to find. Um, I think ultimately it boils down to everybody secretly wants to do a theatrical costume act because, you know, they grew up listening to bands that, that actually did that. Alice Cooper, Kiss, you know, putting on a show like that. Sure. Everybody loves, everybody wants to do it. But I think when the time actually comes, to, uh, are we just going to do jeans and t-shirts or are we going to dress up and make fools of ourselves? Some people just, don't feel like they have it in them to go up and make a fool of themselves on stage. And we have no shame. <laughs> <laughs> How's it been working with pavement entertainment so far guys? Great. Yeah. Every, everything is great. They're treating us really well. And, uh, yeah, we got some good news today. The album has uh, been out a week and we came in, uh, number 33 for the first week on the metal charts and number 15 on another one. So, uh, we're pretty pleased with that, you know, for a, a little old band here, that's just really getting started. Uh, Pretty good news. That's very, very impressive if you ask me because that's hard to actually break through with all the stuff that's out there right now that you have to cycle through. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of stuff out there. And, you know, we're thankful for the, the support and the marketing that Pavement is uh, is doing for us to uh, make sure people notice us. What's impressed or excited you guys the most about making this new album, if anything, or working on it? What What's impressed you guys the most possibly? If you're talking from the production side of the sonic scapes, the way all the strings, percussion, keyboard, vocals, it all came together. And it came out theatrically like it does kind of live. But when you just listen to the music, you can visually see a lot of stuff that's going on in your mind. So the imagination has a lot of places to explore with the album itself. So that's probably the one of the most exciting things to me for it. And it's heavy, but it's atmospheric as well. 
What's the draw to this dark and theatrical side of music? I know we talked about Alice Cooper's and the Kiss is out there and things like that, but but is there anything that, that draws you to this to want to do the dark side and theatrical side of this? That's the same reason people get into horror movies. It's There's that fear of the unknown. People flock to horror movies, mm-hmm. and people in the metal community tend to flock to this dark imagery because it's just fun. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I do a lot of reading, read a lot of H.P. Lovecraft and, you know, Edgar Allan Poe and stuff like that. And I've just always been fascinated by that kind of uh, dark literature. And uh, it, it, I think it's just, it's just really cool to try to, like Itak was saying, try to build a sonic scape that conveys that in addition to just the lyrics and vocals. Yeah, and the, the fascination for me is, is even a kid, even aside from the music, the fascination of the bad guys or the, the dark imagery and books of the villains, because sometimes you want to know more about the backstory of the villains. And I think not to say that we're playing villains per se, but we play that mystery of the dark side. So it's kind of cool to do that. Yeah, a good story with a, a weak villain is just a mediocre story. Could we see like some concept albums from you guys possibly? Cause I mean, I know, some bands do this on the theatrical side, but what about you guys? Are you wanting to do anything like a concept album, maybe, on down the line? Ding, ding, ding. He wins. Yes. Yeah. We're, uh, I think we're, we're, we're are already working on material for our upcoming album, and it's certainly heading in that direction. Because I've always said, you know, if you're going to be a theatrical band, there, there, there should be concepts behind this. There should be like a story that you're going to portray in each of these albums. There should be like, like you guys said, like flock the horror movies. Exactly. There should be something like that that goes like part one, part two, part three, that to me should be like a theatrical band. And that's just my opinion. That's just me. I totally agree. Some of the newer material that we have been working on is very heavily inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. I mean, there's a bit of Lovecraft in the majority of the lyrics that I write. But for the next album, it is it is going to be a little more so than, uh, than previous material. And it is intended to be a, a full-fledged concept album. Was it hard to choose between the current set of songs, guys, on this album, which one would be a single, the first single, or a video, possibly? Was it hard to choose between them, or no? For me, it, I always thought from from the get-go that it was actually suggested. It wasn't my idea. I think um, Gog and Blind had already discussed and, and decided on becoming none, correct me if I'm wrong, but I can see why, because it that song just makes sense to me as, as a single slash video. As, as many times as I've played it, I mean, I, I still get into it like, you know, when I first learned the song, you know. That's the one that makes sense to me for a single slash video. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely written as a, well, <laughs> like it was said by somebody else, an anthem for everyone to sing along with and get involved in. It's something for us to tell to everybody directly. So might as well, <laughs> might as well make them listen. Right, I think mo- most of the, uh, well, all the other songs on uh, Become None are stories in and of themselves, and Become None is an anthem, and so it definitely stands out in that way. The other consideration are we're also uh, putting Worm Tunnel out there right now, and that's getting a lot of airplay, and I think that's probably because it's our shortest song. It comes in at just over six minutes, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we have a, a lot of long songs, and radio likes to play shorter songs, so uh, yeah. Nothing wrong with long songs. I've always said that. Nothing. I love them. We love them. I'm like my my favorite song on all the Iron Maiden albums. Always that last song they did that was really long. You know, uh, <laughs> just like my favorite Symphony X song was the Odyssey, full thirty minutes of metal music, and it's amazing. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, guys. But how was working with producer Yannick Bersier at Wave Transform Studios? Did he produce this album for you all? Yannick Bercier, yeah, he's um, he's he's a good buddy of ours. He uh, he did produce it. Very easy guy to work with. Very knowledgeable, and couldn't say enough good things about him. And he's Canadian, so you know he's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he he's a great guy. He you know he really makes you feel at ease while you're in the studio. He'll throw suggestions your way, but you know he's not one of those producers that is is going to just shut down and not record for the day if you don't take one of his suggestions. You know, oh, it's, uh, in the end, it's our in the end, it's our music, and uh, he's just trying to help it be you know, be as good as it can be. And uh, he's super creative, and he's got a great ear, and uh, we're he's he's a lot of fun, especially when he tries to like fly you with 
some strange Canadian 40% alcohol. That's all that was on the <laughs> bottle. It just said 40% alcohol, and we're celebrating the release of the album, and he just keeps pouring this mystery, like, mystery alcohol to it. It's what my dad drinks, eh? You know, and we're like, oh, it's a... Uh... We were just trying to figure out what it was. And like, it's good, eh? Drink it. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Did he push you guys or and possibly get anything extra out of you all on this album that uh, that he brought out of you possibly for me yeah it was a new experience for me recording with you know getting used to clicks click tracks and such and timing mean, i think uh, some of the repetition in the process which i practiced on my own time as well with him but just that i mean he's yannick is um, not only a friend but he in the in the whole circle here in the recording process he immediately became a team player it wasn't like a he's there to tell you what to do and engineer your album you know but yeah it was it was a good exercise for me and and the way he goes about it is uh is really good yeah i mean he'll he'll hit you up with a you know i think he got a better one in you yeah you know with, with your takes and stuff like that and uh you know he he let me get angry and you know when i was <laughs> trying to write a solo in the, in the studio when I kept screwing up and I got really mad and I just decided I was going to just kind of wank off <laughs> on the next take just to blow off some steam. And I ended up cutting the solo for Balrog General, which is one of my favorite solos on the record, just because I was so angry and I just improv it, you know, and uh, we ended up keeping that take. He kind of looked at me and goes, that was cool. <laughs> and, uh, one of those happy accidents that can happen in the studio, you know, when you uh, sometimes just let it all go. It's like, screw he's you, man, got, look what I can do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's also got some really good insight into a couple of things. Like, mm-hmm. on Become None, he just thought it would be really cool if there was, like, some whispers over that. We had never actually considered that before. So we did a, a whisper take on it, and, and we just tossed ideas back and forth around. Like, what if we put them in reverse, too? And voila, now it sounds creepier than it did. What do you hope everyone takes away from this album or message you hope they hear while listening to it or just any of Summoner Circle's music in general? What do you hope they get from it, guys? For me, I just want them to to escape into it. You know, there, there's a lot of crap going on in the world today. Uh, you know, good stuff, bad stuff, whatever it is, it's just I want to provide an avenue for escape where you can, you know, take some time and just go somewhere else in your mind while you're listening to the music and uh, just kind of experience it. Oh yeah. It's important that you're able to do that. It's comfortable enough for you to escape, but we also like to create something that'll force you to think a little bit differently than you normally have to, at least for me, that's important. Yeah. You yeah, throw some odd time signatures in there and just, you know, a little bit of proggy stuff every now and then just to make you think. Yeah. I hope that it, if anything can inspire other people to think, you know, just, it's okay to be different and think differently about your music or the look of the band or whatever. I hope that it inspires people to get more into art and rather than conforming with the norm. And I do like the idea of just escaping from the madness of what's going on in the world right now. Into another world of madness. Another world of madness. Our world of madness. Right. <laughs> a better world of madness. Yeah. <laughs> At least we can. There is if it can one. stoke imagination of, of, of a lot of people, that, that, you know, to know that would make me very happy in addition to what what everybody else said about it but uh imagination's underrated so you know kind of when you're listening to a story you know one of the incantations and listening to the music and and what blind is saying about i guess i'd like to think that some people might get those images in their mind and everybody pictures things a little bit differently that's kind of how i think about it i hope it's i hope it kind of stokes people's imaginations like that so i mean when i'm writing the the lyrics i i see everything visually in my head I always have a I always have a picture in mind, so I try to essentially write the story that I see in my head. And I don't expect other people to see the same picture, but I hope the lyrics and the the music are detailed enough that they can get pretty close to it, because it's just fun. 2015, your guys' EP comes out for summoning. Let's go back before that, up to the release of that EP and working on this album. Do you see this band still musically growing from where it started, or has it just been more of a personal growth for each of you guys involved in this? Because when did you decide to say, hey, look, we're just going to be a theatrical band. We're not going to be just a regular band. We're going to be a theatrical band. When did all this start to take shape? Right out of the door. Yeah, yeah. We, actually, we actually recorded that EP before we had even 
played our first show. Hmm. We just wanted to come out the gate swinging, and I think we did. Yeah, we came out with a full stage show, you know, album or EP ready to go. And, uh, you know, we just, we didn't, you know, we just wanted to basically hit people over the head and get them to notice us. Like, wow, these guys got their stuff together, you know? And it, it certainly paid off for us because I think our second show, we ended up opening for, it was Deicide, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. So we got noticed. Yeah. Geez, Deicide right off the bat. That's pretty good. Yeah, it was great. And like uh, in that first year, we had Deicide and Pentagram, you know? So some, you know, classic, legendary metal bands that we were able to play with. So it's was, it was pretty cool. Are you guys shocked to fit in with that type of band like DE side, you know, because they're more along the lines of like death metal, things like that. And then here you got you guys. <laughs> Do you like fitting in with those bands and playing those shows or does it even matter right now? I think ultimately it, it doesn't really matter. There There is definitely a genre that meshes really well with us and they're two different aspects to take into consideration, both the visual aesthetic as well as the, the music of it. But there's enough variation in our music that whether it's death metal, thrash metal, black metal, or another doom band, we fit right in. Maybe not visually all the time, but musically, we can fit right into almost anything. Yeah, I mean, we just came off a, a tour with uh, Children of Bodom, Swallow the Sun, and Wolfheart. And uh, our, musically, you could think, hey, we're, we're pretty different, but at the same time, we fit right into there. And... Uh, it was a great experience. Uh, you know, those, those guys treated us really well and, uh, it was just great to get out and get up into Canada and all across the Eastern seaboard and, and get to play our stuff for, for large crowds. It was wonderful. Do each of you like to do anything differently during the writing and recording process to maybe help keep your minds fresh and open to not get bored with it or not let it get stale? I know these, t these are two concepts, but do you guys like to do anything that helps you out possibly right off hand I, I automatically think i mean we're 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 a pretty silly bunch so humor is always in the picture even through the recording process we take it very seriously don't get me wrong <laughs> but uh but we do have a lot of fun doing it uh just uh acting i guess kind of nutty as we do but i i can't think of any ritual per se or anything like that that, that, that i do or, or anybody else unless there's something you guys aren't telling me <laughs> no, I, I think uh, we tend to bear down pretty hard when it comes time to write, record, or perform, and interlaced into all three of those is just um, casual ripping on each other. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> right. You can't take yourself too seriously, you know? Uh -huh. I mean, it, 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 it is serious work, and we certainly believe in it, and we, you know, work really, really hard doing what we do, but uh, you can't take yourself too seriously in life. You know, life is short. You know, you can't be miserable all the time. So uh, even though my best riffs come when I'm like, you know, in a, in a bad place, uh, I'll, 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 I'll fest to that. But, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to have a group of people that you really get along with. And this is, this is a band where we really all get along well with each other, even in a, you know, 15 passenger van that, you know, where our bass player has terrible gas. And, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> keep it down man. Yeah, oh, down that low is. it was it was it was terrible. It was terrible, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> but we don't do it in a heartbeat, exactly, or a fart beat, if you will. Heartbeat, yeah. <laughs> what can fans expect at a show from Summoner Circle? What are they going to get when they come out to see you guys live? A human sacrifice every show. <laughs> yep. Blood, magic. Oh, Always got to spill blood. Yep, must spill blood, blood to appease the elder gods. And then some weird blind guy yelling and screaming at him. Insanity. It'll be a spectacle to see. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we definitely try to try to put on a show. We want people to, you know, not only enjoy the music, but to have something visually to tie along with that, and so that they'll remember who we are and take that with them. And so that way, when they subsequently buy the CDs and listen to the songs and everything like that, they'll have a, a full picture of, of what it is we do. But we're, we're definitely all about the visuals. We put a lot of energy into our show, you know, and Try to just feed off the crowd. And if I'm feeling sassy, maybe a really bad dark joke. Lots of bad <laughs> dark jokes. He's sassy a lot. Yeah. So sassy. Most. We, we do what we can to, uh, whether it's from the stage or not, but when, when we're on the stage, to engage with uh, the crowd as much as possible from the stage. Uh, also off stage, but uh, with our show, 
specifically, we do try to engage as much as we can with the fans. Yeah, and, and after we play, we definitely all try to head over and, and meet as many people as we can while we're able to do that and uh, just try to hang out at the merch table and take photos with fans. Uh, that was one of my favorite things about the tour with Children of Bodom is just taking, you know, crazy photos with all the fans. It was great. Our merch table, I'm going to say, was a, it seemed like a, a party at our merch table. Yeah, every night. there was a party at our merch table every night. That's right. It was really cool. What made the, each of you want to become a musician? What was that spark for you? What was it that said, yeah, that's what I want to do right there? The way it made me feel. I, I mean, I remember as a kid, the way music made me feel was just, that was it. There was a time when I was a kid that I knew music hit me and I knew that somehow, some way, shape or form that I, you know, I wanted to, you know, to do that kind of thing. Obviously at that age, I didn't know what all that entailed and all the things I'd go through to get to this point. But, uh, but yeah, it just, uh, I, somewhere along the way at a young age, I felt it, you know, that, that's how it was for me. Well, yeah. Well, okay. I'll say this. <laughs> I pretty much feel like it's in, been in my blood my whole life, so it's hard for me to think back what was a deciding factor because I was around it from the point I was this very young child, thanks to my parents and my family, and so I just kind of grew up around music, but I always loved it, and then one day, I guess I decided that I wanted to be in a band and be a part of a group of guys writing music together, and when I realized you could do that. And that was sometime when I was a teenager. It just seemed like a really good time. And it's been a good time ever since I started doing that. For me as as a vocalist, I think I'm the only person who never really buckled down to focus on playing a musical instrument like the other guys did. But I've always been an artist at heart, whether it's drawing, painting, doing photography, or just writing. That's always been my passion. I found that with Summoner Circle, I could check every box on my creative nerd list and it has done wonders for me not only that but having used to have been the the shy quiet kid back in school now i get to dress up stand on stage and yell at people so it's a good stress reliever too oh for me you know it's just i think a lot like absalom said it's just you know hearing music and i remember i was really young and my cousin he played uh music he played in rock and roll bands kind of punk bands and lots of Stones kind of bands and stuff like that. But uh, I remember listening to Master of Reality with him when I was really small. And I don't know, it's something about the noises on that album. It's the things I was hearing just, I don't know, my hair stood up in the back of my neck. And it was like, oh, this is really cool. What's their name? Black Sabbath. Okay. And then, of course, you know, like six years old, telling my mom, like, I, you know, Black Sabbath is my favorite band. And she's, ah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, that's usually how it goes. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yep. <laughs> Guys, is there a country that stands out or shocks you that Summoner Circle gets support from or your music even gets played in that area, possibly, if you can tell from your analytics and things? Yeah, we have Yeah, Peru, Brazil. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of uh, fans in South America and uh, Indonesia as well. You look at our Facebook metrics for people who follow us and things like that. So uh, that's pretty cool. We, we do pretty much better everywhere else than in the Except for the South. Yeah, the South. We, we don't we don't do too well down here in the South. We usually have to go north or somewhere else. But you know, imagine that. But uh, <laughs> everybody around here just thinks we're of the devil, but yeah. they they just don't get it. Yeah, that's okay. I'll let them think that. That's a good thing. I mean, we got banned from a venue here. You know, not. Well, I guess it was last year or the year, you know, something like that. Yeah. You killed two people in one night and no, you know, we can't no, go no, back. No, that's right. We had too many human sacrifices <laughs> on the stage that night. They decided that we was all enough. We all by one and they, they couldn't have it. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> wait, so you guys got, you guys got banned from a location? And have to correct them. No, 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 no. Elder gods. You're getting it wrong. That's right. Like <laughs> Satan is just like a low level boss compared to the elder gods. So. Okay. Yeah. Shit for loot too. Yeah, that's right. That's crazy. That is so crazy that they. I wish people would open it's, up their mind. It's the Bible Belt. It's what? It's the Bible Belt. You know. That's true. I'm in Kentucky. I completely understand. It's, it's, it's a one-minded, straightforward road. That's it. That's just the you know. That's great. Oh, we got we got banned. Box checked. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's done wonders for us. <laughs> it's like they're doing us a favor. <laughs> Yeah, pe people people want to be involved in the show. That's what's so mm -hmm. funny about it is we get you know more than one person involved in the sacrifice, 
and then we get shut down, but yet more and more people want to be that, that sacrifice. Yeah. They want to be involved with the band. So we know what we're doing is right. They don't want to have us there. Ah, we're not missing anything there. We already played there. So yep. Yep. we were told at one point that one of our shows is going to be protested by a local church. And immediately everyone got excited thinking, yes, free promotion. <laughs> Another box check. Is there a band on the bucket list for you guys? that you'd like to work tour with or maybe even do an old school album split with if you had this opportunity, possibly. There's a, a couple on that list, and I think everybody's opinion on that differs slightly. Ghost would be a, a big one for me, but we actually just hit a bucket list item for me because the Children of Bodom tour, you know, we were also on that tour with Swallow the Sun, one of my all-time favorite bands, and just wrapped up a tour with them. So that was... That was a big bucket list item for me. Yeah, I think for me, I would love to see Summoner Circle play with Behemoth or Dimu Borgir. Hmm. I think that would be like the shiznit. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd like to say as far as, you know, Marilyn Manson, you know, that would be, to me, that would be crazy just to get an opening slot. Even though we're, he's theatrical too, and we have our thing, he has his, I think it would be really cool to be on a, some sort of show with Marilyn Manson or somebody of that caliber for sure there's a lot of them yep there's too many too many bands yep guys how can folks stay in touch with you all buy some merchandise tour dates things like that how can they do that we have uh merchant as far as online we have merchandise available at big cartel i think it's summonercircle.bigcartel.com if you just go to summonercircle.com and click on store yeah you'll get there that's the easiest yeah. way and we're on facebook and twitter instagram. and instagram and YouTube, make sure to check out our music video for Become None and the recently released uh, live video for Worm Tunnel. Yep. If anybody wants to get anything from the band merchandise wise, they can reach out to us on Facebook. We will reply. Yep. Yeah. That is the one quick way, but you go to the dot com, summonercircle.com. There's many places to go online and get our stuff but we will gladly help anybody that needs help getting it. Absolutely. Feel free to shoot us a, a personal message on Facebook and we'll, we'll get right back to you. Yeah. We do manage our own social media. So anybody wants to hit us up, we're there. Also don't forget to uh, become none. Just, just drop through pavement. So it's available in all the digital market, the Spotify, iTunes, Napster, all that, all those places. And uh, you should see it at some retailers too. Yep. And before I let you guys go, would you care to do a promo for my show? Sure. Oh, yeah, sure. We'll do it. This is Blind of Summoner Circle, and you're listening to Bot's Mayhem Hour. Everybody, you want to get out and pick up this new album from Summoner Circle, Become None, out right now via Pavement Entertainment. Also, get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link, YouTube link, and very soon our Twitch link. And like I said, get out and pick up Summoner's Circle. New album, Become None, out on Via Pavement Entertainment. Also, get out and pick up their 2015 EP, First Summoning. You will not be disappointed. They've got some great, great music. So thank you guys so much for being on the show, and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank really you very appreciate much. you having us on. Manson lady needs to put on some clothes. You're listening to Bodge Mayhem Hour. He's not scary. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.